I feel so bad for her. She like waited in line for hours and hours on Black Friday to get us both Furbies. And I got it and I did I did like it. I did like it initially. Uh, but then it started to get annoying. So I would literally just stick it in my closet <laughs> and it would just sit in the dark. But then it's like, oh, my mom would open the closet to like get my jacket or something. And it would be like, ah, like waking up. <laughs> it's and like, like what the hell is that? Yeah. One of the biggest traditions every year is not Thanksgiving. It isn't Christmas. It's Black Friday because it's that buildup between Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you maybe have a couple of things in your wish list and you're hoping those prices drop dramatically. And I think especially now uh, during the time of the pandemic, we're, we're used to just like sitting down in these chairs as we shop online, but we know that was not always the case. So on a very special edition of A Cast of the Past, we are gonna be going back in time, Black Friday throughout the years, using a couple of different articles as reference. So uh, get ready because the nostalgia machine is going to be uh, quite packed in this one. You can enjoy a brand new episode available every single Sunday with yours truly, Juan Velas from Puerto Rico. Joining me from Boston, Massachusetts, we have Ryan McNulty. Now, Ryan, in your case, when were you first aware of Black Friday as far as actually being part of the experience, if you ever were? It's something I didn't really become aware of until, you know, maybe when I was in high school, I started to become like more privy to it because as a kid, when you're excited for Christmas, you're not really thinking about, you know, you're thinking, oh, you know, Santa's going to give you gifts, but you also know your parents do give you gifts too. And you might you don't really think about how they're going to get it. You know, you're just like, oh, I'm going to ask for Super Nintendo or Nintendo 64, but you're not privy to, okay, you may have to wait in line overnight or camp out the night before to, to get to it because Black Friday is when everyone's trying to get those deals or or new things come out right before the Christmas season and, and you got to stand in line to get it. Because then you have yeah. like a whole month and hoping the kid doesn't find it, right? Yeah. But once you're in high school, you know, you have a job, you start to get some money of your, your own and you want to take advantage of some of those deals. That's when it then it's when it became more of a thing that I was aware of. You know, same thing. I think I was aware of similar to that. The the first time I went to a Black Friday was for a digital camera. Wow, that thing sucked. There, there was a reason that thing. It was like just, uh, you know, digital cameras were just happening. I think it was like 2003, 2004. And man, that was, we made bad choices that night. But <laughs> you know, well, we're not going to start with 2003 or 2004, Ryan. We're going to hit the Wayback Machine. Uh, credit to two different articles. The first one is uh, cheapism.com. The other one is from splinternews.com. So uh, this first one from uh, cheapism. It starts with uh, things like uh, the Cabbage Patch dolls in 1983. We weren't alive then, so needless to say, we don't really have a lot of connection with that. You know, this highlights some of the more popular Black Friday items, right? Like, what's the thing that most people are looking forward to? The also reference in 1985 and 86, uh, Teddy Rookspin. Ryan, who the hell is Teddy Ruxpin? Teddy Ruxpin? Ruxpin. He, Whatever. His, uh, who, who is he? Yeah, he was just another one of these... Um toys i think he is there a tv show or something um i, I know like there's him. there's a lot of bears because i know there's like paddington bear too but and i'm more familiar with him because of his you know oscar worthy movies but um teddy ruxpin I, I know the name i just don't know too much about him other than it was a popular toy my sister might have had one I, I i don't really remember well he says i'm your storytelling friend i read and sing to you anytime anywhere <laughs> so that happened Wait, Bluetooth connected. Okay, that one. Okay, that picture for the article, a little more recent. I'm like, wait a minute. We have Bluetooth <laughs> connectivity in 1985. Clearly, I mean, hey, Ruxpin's <laughs> going strong. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Either that or this toy company was way ahead of their time. No, dude, why do you think they wanted it on Black Friday? I mean, Bluetooth in 1985. <laughs> damn. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, the one we are going to start off with. 1988, we still weren't born. I was born in 89, so were you, right? Yep. So uh, we came to live just a year afterwards. But here, 1988, the original NES, 
the Nintendo. They have a picture of the classic in the article. Let's just assume it's the very original <laughs> yeah. uh, console Cheapism. here. It looks like they're going a little cheap on the images. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness. But Ryan, uh, can you imagine going back to that time period? Because... I don't know if parents really knew what they were in for as far as like mm-hmm. getting like the Nintendo was the hot item. Could you imagine going back to that time and and living that whole process of trying to get that during Black Friday? I know it, it was a, a very different world. And I know one thing about the NES because everyone looks at the NES as sort of the savior of the video game market because there was this market crash due to oversaturation of video game systems. And kind of the angle that Nintendo ended up taking, particularly I think in the U.S., was positioning the NES originally as more of a toy than an actual video game console. And that because of that, it took off. I mean, that's where the whole like Rob the Robot thing happened. Then, of, then of course, with Super Mario Brothers, it's like people just want to play the games, really. It wasn't really about the toy anymore. But that was kind of like the initial strategy that opened the door to people buying the NES. And then once people were playing all these great games, that's when it really took off. But um, I'm imagining that this in 1988, because I think it came out a little bit earlier in Japan, but... Um, in the U.S., it was this kind of fever for a more of a toy than a video game system. That's how people were kind of looking at it. But I can't even imagine what it would be like. It was just a totally different world back then. And the article met for, uh, references a staggering 7 million consoles were sold in 1988. Uh, never has a toy been this successful. And, uh, man, I would love, you know, uh, we're going to be talking about in a future episode some of our favorite pickups in 2020 wouldn't we love to have like a complete inbox original like Black Friday? You know, think of all the stories you would have with like that boxed uh, NES. And uh, now let's go to this article. Ryan also has another one, so we may be jumping back and forth. But now let's go to 1993, 1994. Uh, this is where our nostalgia machine is probably on high gear because we got to talk about Power Rangers. I think when you talk about the TV show, the all the apparel, right? Like the shirts, but also the games. Like I remember playing uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Super Nintendo and mm-hmm. those action figures. Did you did you have the action figure that you could put his you could tuck his head and then the other side would come out with the helmet on. So you could have, you know, with or without a helmet. I don't I don't think I had that one. I love those, especially the Green Ranger. And he's still relevant, which is crazy now, right? <laughs> but man, who didn't love to have a freaking green or, or white ranger? Uh, what do you remember about uh, Power Ranger, especially here? Because, I mean, here we are in the middle of it. Yeah, so ni- 93, 94, this is probably one of my early crazes in my childhood and the funny thing is is for me power rangers i remember the movie i remember i had a couple toys and i I remember some of the kind of like the the straight to whatever like there was like a green ranger movie right things like that i i remember some of it but i like i just don't remember i don't remember it as vividly as a lot of my friends do like people had like the all the crazy toys like the sword and like the megazoid and all that and i don't know i like i guess i just must have had a bad memory then as a kid because i can't even remember specifically what toys i had besides maybe the little figurines i might have had one of like the big red rangers Uh, but i wasn't into power rangers super long i think kind of just the initial like first season or first rendition of power rangers before they came out with like 30 other ones yeah as soon as like they i think i was out before they ever even moved on to the next like generation of power rangers so um it was something i remember really liking the show as a kid but i i must have only been into it for like a year at most I think I was the same where I don't remember watching anything other than the OG version of it. I do remember that on Super Nintendo, they also had the fighting game where you could, you know, battle Mm -hmm. as the the, the bots. I don't even remember what they were called. But, you know, Power Rangers, it's even if you didn't watch them, they are so visually uh, indicative of the times of like the early 90s. Right. And I think that is like the ultimate nostalgia trip. Now, let's head over uh, to 1996. This is maybe the the first item that I remember as far as like, even if you didn't like Elmo, 
Tickle Me Elmo, 1996, people. I mean, who didn't know about that, right? The whole, the whole concept. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that some people skin like the the Tickle Me Elmo? So you just see like the, the skeleton of the <laughs> oh, toy. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's it horrifying. It looks frightening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So even though like we talk about we didn't really understand the concept of like Black Friday until a little bit later uh tickle me elmo is another one that i like that is probably the first toy i remember being like you can't get these toys anywhere they're just flying off the shelves and at that point you know i think we were a little bit older that we weren't the young kids that wanted the tickle me elmo but we were just aware because of how many other people were trying to get it for their kids uh, and I think one person, like I did see one that, uh, you know, I saw one in person, live and in person, which was like a big deal at that point because they were so hard to get. But someone who had bought one, like was showing everybody what, you know, what it was like one of the parents when I was at like a friend's house. So, uh, yeah, I do vividly remember this one just, and again, cause of the Rosie O'Donnell show of all things, you know, all the mothers or whatever must have saw it. And we're like, I could get my kid that. And you couldn't find one. And I think that's, we, we undermine how important that process is because, you know, now you can check out a hot item, you know, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about the pickups and Metal Jesus in the world of video mm-hmm. games. You know, he'll talk about a video game on a YouTube channel. So people go online to buy that game. But here, you know, 1996, talk shows were all the rage. So if you were there and your toy made it into that talk show, you can bet your ass somebody is going to buy that toy. And by 1996, the article makes reference that they shipped over a million Tickle Me Elmos. That's a lot of tickling, Ryan. That's way too much tickling for me. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, there's an ad here. There we go. <laughs> so I, I can jump in quick here with, uh, you know, we're bouncing between two articles. Um, but 1997 is an interesting year. So they mention there's a thing called the Sing and Snore Ernie, which to me just sounds like we're trying to recapture the Tickle Me Elmo magic. Yep. I don't really remember it having nearly the same kind of uh, impact that Tickle Me Elmo did have. But there is a couple of crazes that really hit in 1997. First one here, Tamagotchis. Yes. Now, Tamagotchis... We had, uh, I never had one. I was a Gigapets kid, but it seems like at the end of the day, Tamagotchi was really the one that left a bigger impact in, in popular culture. Um, but yeah, I, I had, my sister and I, we had the Gigapets, but did you ever own any of these? Yeah, no, I actually had a Tamagotchi and man, that was, that was the first time I think even before the, the Game Boy where tech felt like it was part of school because I think the Game Boy, the professors, they thought of it more as a game machine, right? So mm-hmm. that's why it was like banned the Tamagotchi because it was so small. Between classes, you'd see everybody. It's just like, yo, I got to feed my pet. I got to feed my pet. And that was the first time that I was like, wow, you know, we are all reliant on on technology for mm-hmm. some kind of like, the, you know, the technology depends on us. Like, I got to feed this thing. Otherwise, it'll die. And And even now, it's like, they actually came out with a version, I think, this year or something yeah, like that. They they still they're still kind of a thing, which is which is a little crazy. But yeah, it's you know, it's sort of like a Facebook game before Facebook. You yep. know, one of those things where you have to Idle check in yeah. and yeah, one of those kind of ones where it's like a maintenance game where you get to check in every once in a while and, and make sure everything's good. Um, but uh, and the other craze, and this wasn't exclusive to Black Friday, but really took over during this year, and that is Beanie Babies. All those things that people thought were going to be worth millions, and now you can go to your thrift store and pick up three for five dollars. Yeah, Beanie Babies. And I was really, in, me and my sister had a lot of Beanie Babies. I don't know about you. Yeah, we had them a lot here, and uh, I, I don't know how the pharmacies are, like non, you know, not your Walgreens or CVS, but a lot of the local pharmacies here, they would have all of these uh, uh, gift baskets for birthdays and all mm-hmm. of that, and it was basically pharmacies featuring Beanie Babies. Like, that was the place that you would go to. Oh, I yeah. remember in Puerto Rico, I go to El Amal with my mother, and there's just like a giant section of Beanie Babies. 
Yeah, now now you go if you especially go to like a Hallmark store, like the paper store, there's you still see them everywhere, but I think those were those collector items that people at the time thought would be worth something, but I it really comes down to what's the power of nostalgia, right? People think about Beanie Babies, but they're kind of like, eh, whatever. But hey, look right now, Pokemon, old school Pokemon is blowing up. And it's because the people look at look at the if you know people watching the video version, the back of my shelf is filled with Pokemon. You know, Pokemon didn't die, so there's still value there. Beanie Babies, you know, you could still buy a nice gift, but there's no nostalgia there. So that's just a lesson in picking the right collector's item to to uh, to invest in. I think it's because there was a lot of variety. And people were just like, well, let me get all of them. So that way, you know, if you want the panda one or something, you can, you know, resell mm-hmm. that because like now scalping is all the rage. And now let's go to 1998, kind of like a direct follow up to, to Beanie Babies and the, the whole like toy to pet type of deal with Furbies. Now, this is the first one that I, I'm really definitely not interested in, but mm-hmm. I'm fascinated by people's obsession with Furbies because... I think it's the fact that they were animated. Uh, apparently, mm-hmm. uh, uh, thir- Furbies were $30, and they started going for $400 on auction sites. And uh, they sold around 1.8 million Furby toys in 1998, and a staggering 14... Holy crap. 14 million were sold in 1999. 14 million of these robot creatures, Ryan. God. Damn. I owned one, and I feel terrible about it. <laughs> so, They're weird. Can, can, like, yeah. why, okay, sell me on the concept because at least as a kid, you know, 1998, so I wasn't like like a kid, kid, right? I just thought they were freaky AF. Yeah. So okay, here's how it went down, right? It's um, so Thanksgiving. I would normally would be like Thanksgiving. I would meet, you know, your family gets together. And my aunt was there. And normally, like, when you're young, my aunts and uncles would get me gifts. Now it's like, once you're 18, it's like, you're you're on your own. And I don't blame them, right? <laughs> so, but when I was a kid, that's when they would say, oh, what do you want for Christmas? So they would know what to get me, you know, a month later. And my aunt just came up to me and was like, hey, do you want a Furby? Like, your cousin wants one. And they're, they're this big toy craze. So I hadn't, I didn't even know what it looked like. And I was just like... Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll take one. And I feel so bad for her. She like waited in line for hours and hours on Black Friday to get us both Furbies. And I got it and I did I did like it. I did like it initially. Uh, but then it started to get annoying. So I would literally just stick it in my closet <laughs> and it would just sit in the dark. But then it's like, oh, my mom would open the closet to like get my jacket or something. And it would be like, <laughs> like waking up it's like, and like free what it the up, hell is it yeah it up. <laughs> like it would it would wake up you know because in the dark it will sleep and then it wakes up when it, it gets, senses light so yeah furby uh i it was fun for like the first couple weeks but then i just started to get annoyed with it and then i heard that there was some broken ones that were like biting people <laughs> Whoa. See, now so we're those, functioning. those would yeah. actually sell for more nowadays. Oh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. So let's stay with uh, 1999. I know this article doesn't reference it, but I feel like 99 is, man, such a special year, especially for mm-hmm. us. I mean, you just brought up Pokemon. But yeah. I think that when I think of popular culture, right, the, the, the whole concept of pop culture for me 99 was my initiation for it, and I didn't know it. Because Pokemon, to me, that's when I felt like my life changed, right? Like, there was pre-Pokemon Juan, post-Pokemon Juan. So talk to me about that magical year and the things that you have to catch all of them. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Pokemon 1999 was the year Pokemon took over in the United States. And that was one where I started to watch the TV. The TV show was what got me into it. Obviously, kids at school were really into it. And then I would see, you know, kids that I knew already had the Game Boy game, you know, coming into Christmas. But I was really getting to into the TV show. 
And then Christmas morning, this is 1999, my favorite Christmas ever, because I asked, I was like, oh, I just, I want red or blue. And, you know, my parents were divorced. So I was like, oh, maybe I can ask my mom for red version and my dad for blue version. (laughs) You bastard. But then, you know, I lived with my mom. So waking up Christmas morning, but at both at my mom's house, I open up red version and blue version and i'm like blown away and then not only that i opened the starter deck for pokemon cards oh my and like nobody else i knew had pokemon cards yet so i was like the first kid of my friends to have those and i was just like that i was that was just the best christmas ever because it was like really just hitting on i was super into it at the time um so yeah, Pokemon and and those games are just is that like still, peak like, gifting? No, no, no. You're like that you're, was you're, you're underselling. Yeah, that, that was peak process. Christmas. That was oh, a yeah. kid's dream, man. That yeah. was a kid's dream to get red and blue version and Pokemon cards. Like, whew. that was yeah, that was peak Christmas for me. I it, I don't think anything's ever topped that. It really. I I mean, I don't see how it would. And in my case, I got. I had a green, uh, no, I had a red Game Boy with Pokemon Red. Like, that was the one that I got mainly. And, man, I, I remember, like, Pokemon, it was the whole concept because it's the the perfect storm of TV show, card game, uh, the actual game, and needless to say, like, all the merchandise. It was the first time that I'm like, wow, this one thing became a phenomenon. Like, I remember going to stores and you'd only see Pokemon stuff because that was the mm-hmm. whole thing, you know? Maybe you had Furbies, but Furby, it usually was the toy. Pokemon evolved, no pun intended, <laughs> to just the mall is Pokemon. Like the mall became a Pokemon shop, basically. Oh, yeah. So and, that was And that it's was only great. really, I mean, it's it's never quite been as hot as it was in 99 and 2000. But Pokemon is still like, it's one of the biggest brands in the entire world to this day. And the magic can sort of be recaptured because now we get a bunch of 30-year-olds running around buying up all the Pokemon cards in Walmart. Exactly. So, <laughs> Ryan, do you speak yeah. from experience? I'm not that guy. The, all the scalpers have gone there first. <laughs> okay. So so you almost were that guy is what you're saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah, almost. I mean, I'm not, I'm not buying up the whole store like some of these people, but, you know, but, trying to get what I can. But maybe, maybe you didn't have a car at that time. But you know what you could have used to get to that store? A scooter. Let's go over to the year 2000. And I got a pretty bad story with this one. I look at a scooter (laughs) and I just want to cry uncontrollably because I never had my own scooter because it's not just a scooter. It was a Razor scooter, right? Because Mm -hmm. you either were the kid that had the Razor brand or the knockoff oh, brand. Oh, what is the cheap brand that well, I remember? Oh, there was a cheap brand. Whatever it was, I know I had that one, and it wasn't good enough. I needed to have a Razor scooter. And Ryan, I never had. Oh, wait a minute. Can it, is is a Razor scooter worth buying in twenty twenty one? I I still see those around. I really, really do. Yeah. Um. Man, if I want to know the name of that competitor, <laughs> yeah. L- look at that while I share my story here. So, okay. I was at a family gathering and it, there was a big, like when I say big hill, people, it's like like a downward slope, rocky. It's one of these streets that, you know, you basically got a zigzag if you don't want your car to break down. And I asked one of the kids, hey, I've never ridden a Razor scooter. Can I do that? And I'm this chubby, short kid, never really written much of a scooter. So logically... I start my very first experience riding this huge hill. I'm at the top. I'm already regretting this, but I see a lot of kids at the bottom uh, that are saying like, hey, go for it. So I go down. Ryan, I Mm -hmm. bailed so hard. I still have (laughs) scars. Like this happened. I have a scar on my finger to this day. You could see Mm -hmm. a tiny bit of bone in my finger because... I fell mid-hill, and I just kept rolling down. There was so much impact, I fell standing up. Like, I had so much momentum that I literally ended, and I was standing up, and I'm like, I'm fine. Ten seconds later, Once the adrenaline wears off. (laughs) Dude, I walk into my mom. My mom's crying. I'm like, I'm fine. Oh, my God. I'm on fire. I cry uncontrollably, and that's as far as my adventure with scooters went. Ryan, do do you know the brand? 
I, I didn't find it. No! But I, I, if anyone knows what it was, there was always that, like, there was a second brand to, to the Razor. But anyway, I did have a Razor scooter. I was very lucky. I had the green one. You know, it, they were always silver, but you, the handles were uh, a different, you could get in a different color. Um, I, I loved it. I think this was around the time that the Tony Hawk games were kind of taken off too. So, I, you know, we'd have our Razor scooters and our skateboards. But the scooter, like if you were to go down to like the corner store to get some candy, it was always way better to take the scooter than to skateboard anywhere. Like skateboarding was fun to... to oh, and there was, a, there was a Razor scooter video game. That's how crazy it was. For PS1. I could never do any tricks. Some people could do like the spin the handlebars while you jump up in the air. I, I could never do that, but I mean, I, I spin. Yeah, using a razor. Scooter, yeah, but it just wasn't uh, <laughs> yeah. how you wanted to. Uh, yeah, but I I lived when I was a kid. I lived on a big hill, so I would always take my scooter down the hill. But yeah, good memories with Razor scooter. Very very solid uh, way to to travel if you want to be a little bit more convenient than a bike. If you were like to go into a store or something, you could just snap it back to its uh, like because it could you could put the handle thing down and then carry it somewhere. It was a, it was a really fun toy. Yeah, the portability aspect was super awesome. And uh, so let's skip a couple of years. Let's head over to two thousand and four. This is where I think. My experience was not necessarily Black Friday, although I remember it being like the super hot item, iPods. I feel like, in in hindsight, does it feel like iPods lasted decades where really yeah. it was a short amount of time? Because once smartphones came into the scene, it's yeah, kind of like, so why would you have that? Was I, iPhone was like 2007, I want to say. So it was really like iPods blew up in 2004 then eventually we get like iPods with video, being able to watch video. And then before you know it, there's the iPod Touch and the iPhone. And then it, it all happened over a very short period of time. But I think 2004 is like a pivotal year, right? Because we can look at, you know, hey, Razor Scooter was the thing in 2000. But from 2004 forward, you're going to notice that everything's gonna all the hot items are gonna tech. be like tech it's no longer the hot toy is just not the same anymore like the ipod and everything really changed the game because now kids they don't want teddy ruxpin for christmas even if it has bluetooth capability i mean maybe <laughs> you can connect maybe they to do. the ipod yeah, but they would rather get an ipad right so I think this was a pivotal year in just like technology being the thing. Like video games were have been a thing for a long time, but there were still the toys that mattered. But this is when the toys start to take a backseat to technology. And it's not just that. It's the combination of tech and accessibility. I actually remember the mm -hmm. very first time I saw, uh, I was called it a tripod, an iPod. <laughs> it was at school. And I see my professor, he's asking me like what I want to listen to. It's like, you know, after class. And I see him like, what the hell are you doing in a circle form with a thing? Like how much how much music? Well, like, what is that? Because I was still using CD players long mm -hmm. after iPods came out. And it's this combination of a tiny device with like hundreds upon hundreds of, zo of songs. And also, shout out to Zune. Never forget, people. Microsoft tried. <laughs> Zune, the Zune was not a bad idea. Just terrible yeah. marketing and never what forget. Was, uh, what was your first iPod? My first iPod was the video. I actually got that. What? Uh, well, yeah, now, now that you say that, I got that. Uh, I think it was either on Black Friday. A family member got it for me and gave it to me as an early Christmas gift. And I was blown away because I would watch a lot of video, but the battery for video would only last 30 mm -hmm. minutes. And I would watch the one-up show and The Office. That's actually how I watched, like, The Office. Wild. I, I downloaded the episodes and watched them. Man, wow, this is taking me back. I, I wasn't even a kid, but something about, like, watching things on a tiny screen, I loved. I would just put my blanket up top, and I would just watch the first two seasons of The Office like that. Man, I miss that's, those yeah, days now. That's I'm, some, I'm sad like, now. That, that's, that's now like old school. It's crazy. Uh, I did have a iPod mini. I had a black iPod mini, I believe. And I think it was like the second generation mini. Before then, I had a, a 
MP3 player that looked like a stopwatch and could hold like 20 songs on oh, it. I know which one. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and then I was fortunate enough to get an iPod mini. From there, I think I jumped right to the iPod touch and ended up getting like two different generation. I got like gen generation two iPod touch, then a generation four iPod touch, and then finally just went to smartphones from then on. So, but iPod touch was really great. But uh, 2004 is really where Apple just completely took off. And now that they're still pretty dominant in the space. So exactly. You could just give everybody the new iPhone every year and most people will be satisfied, which yeah. is like a boring thing because I, I do find it very sad so like next let's go over to 2005 and this is a surprise to nobody the xbox 360 when we go into this high definition generation of games even though at the end the playstation 3 uh commercially did better that was towards the end right after multiple revisions it took a long of long yeah. time for uh playstation 3 to make up that uh make up that ground yeah that horrible thing and and even then it's like that was a weird generation because what I remember about the 360, I did not own a 360 until after I bought a PS3. And I remember Black Friday around this part for all the wrong reasons, which is Red Ring of Death. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of people. And I remember the videos and the stories. Like This is when like online video became more of a regular thing. And you see like the N64 kid, instead it was like the, N6, the 360 teenager pissed off because his 360 didn't work. What was uh, your memory of uh, the 360 uh, around the 2005? Uh, I do remember. So I was still in high school at the time. And yeah, I remember this really taking over. And this was kind of the strategy that we saw. This kind of Xbox 360 kind of set the template of, hey, we're going to come out. A, you know, we're going to get ahead on um, on PlayStation this time. By being the first one out. Because was PS2, PS2 did this last time, right? Where they yeah. were the first system out. And they got a huge chunk of the market share. So Microsoft was like, okay, we're going to be out first this year. So they're out a year ahead of the PS3 and the Wii. And it worked really, really well until, until the very end. I mean, ultimately, yeah, PlayStation 3 and the Wii, I mean, the Wii totally won this generation by a huge mile. But at the end of the day, the 360 did extremely well and is very fondly remembered, remembered aside from the whole Red Ring issue, which is a big issue. But people still do love Xbox during this gen. This was peak kind of Xbox, I think, in their success. And then we saw Nintendo try to, to do this year early thing. And, well, it didn't exactly go the same way. <laughs> Yeah, because if in 2005 we're talking about the 360, 2006, and once again, we're seeing just like a shift to a full digital uh, atmosphere, we have the PlayStation 3 and the Nintendo Wii. And the Wii in particular was a very fascinating thing because, you know, it's Nintendo, it's the Nintendo console, right? For the non-gamer, hey, you want to get mm -hmm. the new Nintendo? It's a lot easier to sell, especially in contrast to the $600 PlayStation 3, right? 599 US dollars. Okay, right, right. Technically, <laughs> technically plus tax, yeah. so you're actually doing worse there. But the Nintendo Wii, according to this article from Cheapism, sold a whopping 600,000 consoles in its first week, according to IGN.com. You know, we we have talked about the, the Wii in different ways, and and the gimmicks and not, you know, this launch with Twilight Princess, which came out a little bit after on the GameCube. We could talk about the PS3. I think that the real conversation is the Wii, even though I love the mm -hmm. PS3. Talk to me about 2006 Wii. It was crazy. You couldn't find one anywhere. I remember trying to get a Wii. And this was, I think, even this was after Christmas. I still could You still couldn't get one. Um, you know, I thought, oh, things would settle down a little bit. My uh, my buddy had one, and after playing Wii Sports, I was like, I need to get this thing. I, I want to play this because, I mean, that was just a perfect introductory game to show what the Wii could do, and it was such a fresh and new concept at the time, and I, I was super excited to get one. I eventually gave up and didn't end up getting one until way late in the life cycle. Uh, and I, I just would always just play it at a friend's house 
and I was happy. I ended up getting a PS3, and that's what held me over through most of this generation. And like I said, until they came out with the Zelda game, and then you I was still like, have okay, that well, PS3, don't you? I still have that PS3, and then I still, and then yeah, I do. I still have my Wii as well, but I got the black Wii that came with Wii Motion Plus way in like 2011 when I knew Skyward Sword was coming out. That was the whole reason I got it. You know the crazy thing? This would not happen nowadays, especially now with like the PS5. The PS4 is out of stock. Like, forget about the PS5. Some people are struggling with PS4s. <laughs> I got to all those kids that are that <laughs> their parents bought the wrong thing. I'm sorry. It's like, hey man, you got a new console. I actually bought a Wii at launch without a pre-order, which was groundbreaking because we got a tip that the Toys R Us in Puerto Rico may rest in peace. Uh, it was it it was gonna receive more orders than other places. So my brother and I went like a couple of hours after people were already in line, and we got that with Twilight Princess. And as you mentioned, I think Wii Sports is like the perfect uh pack in for mm -hmm. uh for uh like a video game console. Moving into two thousand and seven, I think this to me is definitely like if we're to, if we're in like the roller coaster, this is when it started to go down. Where it's yeah. just kind of like. We're maybe getting some more tech, right? Because we yeah, have. Uh, um, oh, so we. Yeah, I was going to say we have Nintendo 3DS and iPod Touch coming out this year. But the 3DS honestly had a little bit of a rough launch and wasn't exactly lighting the world on fire when it, when it came out. But shout we out to do, the ambassadors. Yeah. Yeah. But we do also have the the iPod Touch. Now, that is definitely something that really took off because it was, you know, for those, especially with the younger kids and, you know, people who were with shitty cell phones like myself at the time, the iPod Touch was kind of like getting a smartphone without having to buy a smartphone. And especially, like you said, those kids that were fascinated by the iPhone, but they, you know, or by smartphones and all that kind of stuff. This was kind of their solution. To like, if you were too young to own a cell phone, you could still get an iPod Touch. You know what I mean? So it started to, especially in the later years, really take off with younger kids. Um, but it was uh, really, I think this came out before the iPhone, right? The iPod Touch? Uh, I th I'm pretty sure. I, I, am, I always get confused about all that. But I remember the, the iPod Touch was the first time that I'm like, this is the future. I never owned an iPod Touch, but I always looked at that. I'm like, I'm like, this is it. You know, we've kind of peaked as far as because even though the tech has gotten better, it's still that. Like you look at that, and we've just gotten better versions of that over time. And even though the iPhone came out and had a lot of these things, I think it's the iPod Touch that was even more important than the iPhone because. It gave mm -hmm. people, as you mentioned, maybe you couldn't afford like the full iPhone because it wasn't just the phone. I remember the data plans here, dude. They had like an iPhone tier. You had all the other phones and then the iPhone tier. The iPod Touch was the first thing that gave you a sample of like, hey, like it is no longer about just making calls. It is about an entire experience. And oh, yeah. I think it is easily one of the most uh, landmark or key things that happened within the uh, early 2000s. Yeah. And one one last shout out for 2007 because this was huge. This was the year of the rhythm games. This was the Guitar Hero Rock Band yes. explosion. Uh, and yeah, now rest in peace to all the plastic instruments in a landfill somewhere. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was a huge trend. I had just gotten into college when these games came out and it was like the perfect like socializing game like people come over to hang out and play play guitar hero and rock band um so it was a great time um for for me to to experience these games and i had both guitar hero and rock band and eventually gave it all away because i just didn't want didn't know where to put all the plastic instruments so i regret yep. doing that so hard because now it's hard to find yeah yep it's like super expensive and especially now with the pandemic my wife and i have gone a couple of times like man i could go for a rock band session then you go on ebay it's like nah man i'm good <laughs> yeah. because then you can find some instruments out there but they are so beat up you know you're gonna get like yeah. one jam session so it's very frustrating 
And uh, I'm going to skip uh, the, the article references one thing, which is uh, Zuzu Pets. Just quick shout out to yeah, Zuzu Pets, Yeah, it's kind of a little past us a little bit. You know, exactly. I think we're, so, yeah, I don't remember hearing too much about it. Shout out to the Zuzu Pets fam. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but now this one, I, I vividly remember 2011, the Kindle, which is interesting because the, the iPod touch and the Kindle, I think are very pi- uh, pivotal, p- pivotal, I should say pivotal. <laughs> uh, I wanted to say a fancy word, tech devices for very different reasons. I, iPod mm-hmm. touch was very tech oriented, like futuristic the Kindle was trying to rekindle, get it? <laughs> rekindle oh my the God. love for <laughs> we peaked, people. We have peaked. The remembering reading books and all of that, like in paper form. And the battery life in this was insane. And apparently in 2011, they sold more than 13 million. And for good reason, because it looked interesting. If you're a book lover, but you don't want you don't want to carry all these books, have these large shelves, it would help, and it was pretty accessible. What do you remember about the Kindle? Uh, yeah, I remember seeing this and like this come out and being this big thing that everyone wanted. And it's interesting because this is really this is the hot gift, to not necessarily for the kids, although they could enjoy this as well. But this was kind of like the hot gift to give True. to like a significant other or like your mother or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I do remember seeing this and, um, you know, the other tablets were kind of coming out around the same time. So I was like, oh, why does this look the way it looks? But it it's designed specifically so that it's easier on your eyes and like perfect specifically just for reading, right? Not playing, you know, video games on or, or browsing the internet necessarily. And interestingly, my girlfriend actually picked up a Kindle this year, even though, you know, she has a tablet, but she did want specifically one that's nice for reading. Um, so there's still like, they're still out there and there's still good reason to own one because um, they are much better for, if you just want to read books, it's much yep. better to use this than to use like an iPad. No, it's great. They have that paper white model now which it, it just looks beautiful. And quickly going over to 2013, this is where we're definitely taking the next leap as far as tech goes, the iPad. Now, this was the next boom period where um, this is where Apple stores, at least for me, you saw those ridiculous lines and people going day in, day out, like, do you have it available? Do you have it available? It came a point where every store, whether it be Best Buy, CompUSA, it was the, is there an iPad store, really? Yeah. Uh, what do you remember about this point in 2013? Yeah, this is, yeah, tablets. I remember hearing like rumors about it before it came out. And it's like, oh, what's the next big thing that they're coming out with? And then, yeah, I do see the iPad. And I was like, okay, so it's a bigger iPod touch. I'm like, ah, I can see why, you know, people like, adults would like it because it's a nice like leisure device it's the perfect thing to browse while you're sitting on the couch while the tv's on or whatever you can do your crossword puzzles or whatever and to this day i've still never owned a tablet i'm i like i will i got my phone here i watch movies on my phone i've you know or i'm on my laptop i'm like i got my laptop i got my phone I'm okay with watching videos on my phone, so I've just never made the jump to a tablet. Uh, this and is the still, first yeah, year. It still hasn't been. Well, we actually got an iPad Pro. My wife got one this year because for drawing, it's like amazing. So we watched mm-hmm. some stuff there. But yeah, I was a very late tablet adopter. I think a couple of years ago, I got a Kindle Fire because they're like the cheaper ones yeah. uh, within that cycle. You know, you can get it for like 70 bucks on sale, uh, things like that. And the iPad made up uh, 18% of Target's Black Friday sales in 2013. So uh, a bit ridiculous. And now we're just going to do some some highlights because we I feel hor- horribly disconnected with the following ones. Yeah. Uh, Frozen. Well, Frozen, I can understand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that one, not only because we sang a variation of it, but uh, I mean... <laughs> I just saw that damn. movie for the first time this year. Really? Yeah, I saw Frozen and Frozen 2. Is it not the and- worst? Frozen 2 is complete garbage. The first f- first Frozen is actually pretty good, but Frozen 2 is terrible. Yeah. It's just I, nothing. Literally, it's a movie I watched. I was like, nothing happened in that movie. 
literally nothing. Like, what well, was they the point made of it? A lot of money. They, yeah, the, the, the yeah. Point it was, was just one of those Ryan. movies where I just watched it and I was like, wow, there, there wasn't even a villain in this movie. What the hell? <laughs> Maybe you were the villain in the movie. Yeah. It was a self reflection. I have. I have no idea. This is right, where I begin to feel, feel old. old. Yeah, this yeah. is where we feel very disconnected. <laughs> okay. This is two semi-old men react now. 2016, <laughs> Hatchim- H- Hat- Hatchimals. Self-hatching electronic pets were so hot in 2016 that most store shelves were bare uh, well before Black Friday. A positive mindset, though. This is we're a going back to toys. combo breaker. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to toys. I mean... Like, this is where the old person in me would be like, I don't like how that looks, but yeah. I didn't like how Furby looked. So, yeah. True. And then, what the <laughs> hell is this? Okay. Fingerlings. Uh, in, in two thousand, oh, I guess. Nope. nope. Yeah. Uh, 2017, Fingerlings. What? Yeah. It looks like a little unicorn that stays on your finger. Yep. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does anyone who have kids who who would want People, one of these please what, tell me? Yeah. What do you do? You know what? I don't want to know. We're moving yeah. on. We're moving on. Okay. This, what the hell is this? I am tired of seeing this at freaking Walgreens and, and I've CBS. never seen this in my life. LOL surprise. Yeah. I keep seeing that everywhere now. I didn't even know this was a thing Invented the unboxing gift back in 26. And the trinket stuff suitcases, collectible figures... Oh. have been at the top must have lists that reached fever pitch in 2018 so it's just like a mystery box right I guess. so this is like the modern trading card game oh <laughs> yeah dude I, I i could totally see the appeal i mean they've been coming out with some pokemon mystery boxes and you can't get them anywhere this feels like a it's youtube great. friendly thing because if you notice it's yeah. very visual <laughs> maybe it's meant for like kid Wait, channels is this like taking the the what is it like the the game what are they called the loot boxes the yeah, in yeah. video game loot boxes to wow. in real life yeah and then is ea sports behind the uh, ea I, games I mean, behind they could this be. <laughs> they, they could be you spend 20 more yeah. bucks and you get things that aren't worth a damn and then the last thing which this is this is fake because in 2020, they assume you can buy a PlayStation 5, which yeah. is absolute bullcrap. Because hypothetically, uh, this year by far, especially because of the pandemic, I mean, we've talked about how retro gaming has been like on the up, uh, upward uh, slope just because of like people are stuck at home. And mm-hmm. in, in 2020, I think without question, it, it's not just the PS5 and the Xbox uh, Series S. And the X, the Nintendo Switch is still a thing. You know, we didn't really talk about the Switch here. That was hard to get all year. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So it's interesting because the Switch came out in 2017, right? I believe so. Which I'm surprised it wasn't mentioned in this article here. But 2017, you still have trouble buying it now. And isn't that... Uh, worthy of uh of mentioning maybe that is one of the hottest yeah. items of all time I think so well it definitely fluctuated because there was a time where it was pretty easy to go into a store and get a nintendo switch w- around when i got it in i want to say 2018 but definitely the pandemic as well as games like animal crossing that have really broad appeal um have reignited it and it was very difficult to find a Nintendo Switch even in the spring, not even close to Christmas season. And I'm sure it's flying off the shelves now. And yeah, good luck trying to get PS5 or, or Series X right now. But they, de- I mean, the, they're definitely still up there because you can, they, they still are selling them just in very small quantities. So they still are the hot item. It's just probably the hardest it's probably the hardest they've ever been to get these yeah. like a new generation of systems yeah so people uh once again if you're curious to check out these articles the main one that we made reference to is cheapism.com it says uh they also have search functions for best coffee makers rv rental <laughs> and costco versus sam's club is that worth talking about in 2021? <laughs> Maybe we'll do like a <laughs> we'll do like a debate which one's better. But uh, when it comes to the Black Friday stuff, everybody, let us know what is your uh, Black Friday hot ticket item that either you went out of your way to buy for a loved one, 
or for yourself, I think by far. Or that gift you got for Christmas, that that hot item gift that you got. What was the best one you got for Christmas as well? Exactly, because usually they go hand in hand, right? It's like you'll you'll maybe you'll buy it on Black Friday because it's at a cheaper price, but even if you don't get it, you're still pro- gonna probably buy it, right? Uh, to give as a Christmas gift, though. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to all of that because this is a very uh, general list, right? I mean, we could talk about this one. Maybe next year we can do like the the lower tier items that maybe were not brought up on these lists. So people, if you want to have the conversation be part of your experience, you can head over to the Discord at acasttothepast.com slash Discord. Huge shout out to all of you where you talk about movies, food, gaming pickups. If you enjoy the podcast, leave that five-star review on Apple Podcast Stitcher, or your other preferred app of choice, and we will be very thankful right here on Acast. To the past. I, I ain't never going to make no damn line again on Black Friday. I, I just want to... Mm-hmm. I need to close this episode yeah. off it's by all, saying that. It's all online for me this year. I think it's a good year to stay online. You can buy things like we're wearing boxers, man. It's like it's the best thing ever. <laughs>